disclosure. I just wanted to make sure we did it right and yeah. the better faces of it. So yeah, we. I realized that the notes I took were messy at best. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't worth it to put you guys through that. So you know what? We're gonna we're gonna clean up and we're gonna try to take you through this and do it as much justice as possible. Yes. Full disclaimer, as we usually do, this is not for like any disrespect to the family or the victim. Um, we are just compiling information, informational, and what do I usually say? Educational, not yes. entertainment. Okay, this is not entertainment. Also, disclaimer, this case is about a child, um, the murder of a child. So if that is triggering, please do not watch this content. It's not for you. Um, but if you want to know more, we are about to get into it. Okay, so today we're talking about Lorenzo Ahmed Gonzalez Gacho. And he was born on November 29th, 2001. He was the middle child of Ahmed Ali Gonzalez and Anna Gacho. And they had three children in total. Um, they had two daughters. Um, it says that Gonzalez showed interest in sports and was active on the soccer team. Um, he went to the Dorado Academy in his hometown, and um, at the time of his death, his parents were in the process of getting a divorce. His sisters were ages 13 and 5, and he was 8 years old. So, let's get into it. So, Lorenzo Ahmed Gonzalez Gacho was an 8-year-old Puerto Rican boy who was murdered in his home in Dorado, Puerto Rico on March 9, 2010. At the time of his death, his mother, Ana Gacho, and two sisters were at the house. Um, let me see where I want to go to. So by all accounts, Lorenzo just seemed to be a normal, really happy young kid that everybody adored. So, again, tragic murder cases always are just, you know, super impactful when it involves a child, somebody who's vulnerable, helpless, vulnerable, defenseless, um, and especially somebody who seems to have been so just, you know, well respected by his community. So. Yes, okay, so let's talk about his death. A lot of this information is not clear because this investigation was so messy, so messy. there's not a clear, definitive, like, the last case we did was very like she was here and then she went here and then this person was here we don't have that with this case okay so what we do know is that Lorenzo um, was taken to the treatment and diagnostic center in Dorado Puerto Rico he arrived between 5 and 5 30 a.m. covered in blood he was also pronounced dead at the clinic so before this what we know is that Ana Gacho is there with her two daughters and Lorenzo. Lorenzo, um, something happened to him and one of the sisters wakes Ana Gacho up, letting her know that she's covered in blood and that something has happened to Lorenzo. Um, where do we want to go next? So, basically, what ends up happening is that Ana is made aware of the fact that Lorenzo is not okay. There's some, there's blood on her daughter and a lot of time tends to go by, so normally in situations like that, you know, you would think parents, their first instinct is to get help, and Anna doesn't do that. She kind of waits a little bit. There's a big time lapse of about an hour from when uh, she realizes there's something wrong with Lorenzo to her getting to a hospital and getting help. Yeah, so the story that Anna tells is that um, something happened to Lorenzo, like he fell off the bed. That's her story. That's the story, and it's a normal bit. It's not a high bit. Yeah. It's just a normal She just tells police that she's woken up by her daughter telling her that um, she was covered in Lorenzo's blood. Um, she infers that the child fell out of the bed, and from there she waits an hour and a half to take him to the ICU when we've read and heard online that there was a facility five miles from her, or five minutes where she could have gone immediately oh, with Lorenzo. Yeah. So sus. Sus as fuck. And why wait? That's my question. Is why would you wait? Mm -hmm. Unless somebody was involved and you were thinking about how to cover it. But I'm getting out of myself. Let's get, let's get going. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to read a little bit here. So the case gained notoriety, notoriety in the island for the disparities and irregularities surrounding the evidence and testimonies about it which initially led to the boy's mother, along with three males, to be labeled potential suspects by the Island's Secretary of Justice, Guillermo Sum 
makes this case so hard is that it's been blocked from the beginning. But before we get to that, the initial information that Anna released was seems to be that she was just there with her two daughters. Later on, as the investigation progresses, we find out that there is a lot more people involved with this. There are a couple more men in the house. At the time of the murder. At the time of the murder. That she did not tell investigators about. Until later on, after the fact. So, before we get into one of the biggest suspects, let's just give you guys a list of the suspects that were in the case. So, first of all, we have Anna Concho, which is the mother. The mother. This is Lorenzo's mother. She was identified as a suspect by the Department of Justice on March 19th, so a couple of days after the murder. Her two daughters were also removed from her home on March 30th, 2010. Um, oh, and they have had contact since. Do you think that's good? I think initially if someone's even a suspect in a murder charge, it's probably safer to have children away from them in a protected space, and I don't know. That's so difficult. She has always insisted that she's innocent. And like I said previously, on March 9th, 2015, they announced that she was no longer a suspect. The next suspect we have is Jesus Gennaro Camacho, which is Ana Cacho's boyfriend at the time. He was identified as a suspect on October 26, 2011, so a year and some change afterwards. He denies being in the house when the incident occurs. He also maintained that he is innocent, and he was also released as a suspect on the fifth year anniversary of the murder. Then we have Alnar... Alnar... Arnaldo. Um, so this is a friend of Cacho. He had been rumored that he was in the house the night of the murder, and on March 9th, 2015, like everybody else, he was considered no longer a suspect. We also have William Marrero Rivera, um, a federal agent for ICE. He was identified as a suspect in August of 2012 by authorities. Allegedly, he was also present in the Cacho house the night of the murder, and like we were saying, on the fifth year anniversary, he was announced no longer a suspect. And then we get to the biggest suspect of all, in my opinion, besides for Ana Cacho, and that is Luis Gustavo Rivera Ciaro. We will be mentioning him as Luis moving forward because we don't need to do the four name shit, okay? We, don't, we want to do it justice and we don't want to ruin it, so we'll just go with Luis. Luis is another suspect. He's known as a Mongo. He was a homeless man that was missing his left forearm. Um, he grew up in the same area. And the night before the murder, he was incorrectly, accidentally, who knows how this happens, but released from jail. Um, they just kind of let him go. And this is, he was in the area of the um, Cacho family's home because it's confirmed that he was at this Burger King. Um, the night of the local Burger King. The local Burger King. So that's all corroborated. He was in the area. Okay. Okay. So he was seen in the area. That's pretty much all we know. Yeah. He's so let's go through a more detailed timeline. We're going to skip around a little bit, but this is going to give you guys a little bit more um, context for why Louise is such a big target as a suspect. So, um, let me see. So the murder happened on March 9th, okay? So March 8th, 2010, Louise is released by mistake from Saban Oez de Arequipo Prison. <laughs> where he was admitted for the murder of Oscar Pacheco Garcia. Um, and what we learned in our research of this is that he, uh, it was an attempted murder and the man actually did end up passing away from the injuries. So, he's a murderer. Okay, people, he's a murderer. Now, it's important to mention that it was suspected that he did have uh, mental issues that he was struggling with. So, he is released from prison accidentally. He's given a ride to Dorado, which is where the Cacho family home is. Yep. Um, so, that's that. Then, on March 9th, Lorenzo is found murdered in his home. Okay. Um, he is taken to the Dorado CDP, or CDT, where he is declared dead. Um, Anna says that her youngest daughter, Anna, wakes her up loudly, telling her that Lorenzo had gotten her wet with blood. And this is when Anna infers that he had fallen out of bed. The, f the same day, uh, Agent Jamie Cruz of the Dorado Police Headquarters arrives at Lorenzo's residence located in the Dorado Del Mar urbanization at 6 a.m. to guard it. Um, 
Carlos Chavez of the ICF practices on, or does an autopsy and communicates to the prosecutor's office the cause of death, um, which is indicative of homicide. Um, so the police inform Ana Cacho that the death was not accidental. Um, ICF on March 10th, so the following day, ICF returns to the scene in the company of prosecutor Wanda Cassiano. She is the director of the Specialized Unit for Domestic Violence, Sexual Offenses, and Child Abuse, and Prosecutor Santini and Agent Malton Maldonado and Elias. The scene is documented by report, photos, and videos in a bag containing the release documents of Luis. So they find a bag that has his release documents in it at the scene of the crime, okay? Or outside the scene of the crime. Right. Which is a little strange. Super strange. Um, they also collect a toothbrush and toothpaste, which are located in the courtyard of the residence. Um, I want to talk about his injuries. Where was that? So initially, his injuries were, he had so much blood covered on him that it was difficult to see okay. whether or not what caused it. So the autopsy revealed that he had severe injuries to the face and head, which included three stab wounds to his face. Okay, so that's not a falling off the bed type situation, in our opinion. Now the crazy thing about the autopsy is that Anna rushed yep. to get the body cremated, which we don't know exactly the reason behind that. It could be religious purposes. It could be. It could be but it looks sus as fuck. Now, for the autopsy to go through and then prove that the cause of death was you know, related towards homicide, that then makes her even more suspicious. I think we should also mention here that the prosecutors gave the family full permission to wipe and clean the entire crime scene. That is absolutely ridiculous. They, the s- they said it was to protect the daughters um, from emotional trauma. From when they go home. Yep. So I kind of understand that to an extent. But they did not collect as much evidence as they should have. Now, who cleaned the crime scene? Did they clean the crime scene or did they have the family clean it? Like, the family cleans it. That doesn't even make sense. I know. I think we should also mention here that a crack pipe was found at Ana Gacha's residence. Allegedly. Allegedly. And that it had her DNA on it. Now, we should also mention that when they did a drug test of Ana Gacha, she passed. So... Who's doing that crack? That's what I want to know. It just leads to wonder why what her DNA was on that, and if she did pass a drug test, was it legit? And at the very best, in this scenario, she is performing child neglect, okay? She has multiple men who don't belong in her home. They're with her and her vulnerable children. And paraphernalia. And drug paraphernalia. So what the frick? Like, so do you think that's why she's like, didn't immediately call the police whenever something happened. Yeah, she's probably like, oh my gosh, I'm doing crack. <laughs> I, can, I can't. So, okay, unfortunately, that is not probably what happened. But honestly, I think maybe one of the strange men that she didn't mention initially could have been doing drugs yeah. and something have happened to her child. Yeah. Which is why she waited so long to report it. Another, do you want to go over theories or should I keep going down the timeline? I think we should keep going down. So Louise, um, the main suspect, his documents were found at the crime scene yep. on the night that he was released. Yep. And had strolled through the local Burger King. Yep. To end up there. Yes. Okay. So on March 15th, so a couple of days later, Ana Gacho was summoned by the Bayamon prosecutor for an interview with the prosecutor, Wanda. I'm just going to call her Wanda, okay? Um, Anna was accompanied by two lawyers and a prosecutor, and they gave her legal warnings not to talk to um, police about what happened. She refused to testify on the recommendation of her lawyers, and at the time, she was officially declared a suspect. Um, 
is allegedly murdered. So now it swings back. Or he's found, or he's seen at the Burger King at 2.30 a.m. Um, and that's corroborated by the manager of the Burger King. Um, so at the end of March uh, 2010, the uh, superintendent of police, Jose Figuero Sanko, or Sanka, yeah. um, requested FBI cooperation in the investigation. So they're basically saying, like, we need help. Um, we don't have the resources. We don't have the team, whatever it is. On March 6, 2010, Anna goes to the FBI offices to request research assistance, and Agent John Morales, along with her supervisor, Amado Vega, interview Ms. Concho. Um, she provides her version of the facts and establishes not having participated in the murder. Um, yeah. So, she's basically like, I didn't do it. Um, August 6, 2010, Luis is taken by officers of the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation to the FBI offices. He's then interviewed by two FBI agents. Um, after signing the legal warnings that were provided to him in writing and then confronted with incongruities in his testimony. He begins to admit his participation in Lorenzo's murder, narrates in detail the motive of escalation, describes the scene and the use of a sharp weapon. Um, he admits that when he leaves the resident, he jumps the wall, and that's when he noticed that he dropped his bag that has his release documents from prison in them. Um, he made a statement uh, of his handwriting accepting responsibility for Lorenzo's death. So you have a homeless man who was just released saying that he went in and murdered him. Yes, a couple of months later. His documents are found at the residence. So it kind of points towards him at the moment. Yep, yeah, so as part of the investigation, FBI agents transfer Luis to the Dorado Del Mar urbanization and the description of the house and its contents validate Luis's confession, as well as another nearby residence in which he claims to have hidden after the facts. Um, so why did he attack him? What was the motive? Right. Trying to leave. Okay, he was in his way. That's pretty extreme. It is extreme. I would have... Tried to... Scoot. Yeah. I don't think it takes much to, like move an eight-year-old out of your way. Yeah. But it doesn't take a knife, I can tell you that. So, what was, I think what was, what I was wanting to mention earlier was that one of the IC, ICA employees who was there the night before was also one of the ones that was sent to the household on the morning after the murder. So they had an officer actually guarding the house, kind of, so to say, and the weird thing about that is that they still let the family members go in and out to go ahead and clean and collect all the things. And so, him being involved in there and being there the night before, it, you know, we're just getting so many different people who are just, it could be anybody. It's like, who did it? Yeah. So, in the notes, there's just, I don't even want to read it because it's just a lack of proper investigation skills. Like, it's just a mess of, like, all of these people getting involved, trying to do this, do that. Like, it's messy. It's messy. And there's too many people involved in it. 
fully aware of what happened, but he knows something. Yeah. Uh, in December of that year as well, they compose a big group of prosecutors. Um, and there's a full year of reinvestigation, and they start from scratch. They rebuild everything. There's new samples taken. Expert tests of DNA were made. The scheme of the exit of the aggressor of the house was reconstructed based on photographs of the blood stains, and 120 people were interviewed. On March 8, 2016, it's determined that Luis will be arrested for the murder of Lorenzo. They find cause, basically, on on eight, on March 8, 2016. Is they find cause for him? Which is so weird, because it's like... He gets released. No, like, a year before the fifth anniversary of the murder, Anna and all the men that are at the house on that night, they are, like, deemed no longer suspects. And then a year later, he's, oh yeah, he's the murderer again. So it just seems like a convenient, just, this is the guy, he's already kind of confessing for it, let's just take it. Kind yeah. Of thing. See, that's not satisfying for the people who want justice for the murder of a child, whose parent just kind of seems like they're not really, I don't know, like, it just, it just, it just seems like there's a lot of cover-up going on for okay. a lot of different areas. So, the, the next update is on April 28, 2016, so that same year, charges against Louise were dropped due to lack of evidence. So, there wasn't DNA, there wasn't fingerprints, there wasn't a weapon, so they dropped the charges. Um, so, they thought they had cause on March 8, 2016, but then on the A April, month later. They decide. No. Not enough. We changed our mind again. And then it says, on June 7th, 2016, in a trial on appeal, the charges against Louise were dropped again due to total lack of evidence that could prove the presence of Louise at the Cacho residence. So, that is the last update that we have about Louise, that the charges are dropped. He's no longer the suspect. But that still leaves us with the giant question of what the fuck happened. Who killed Lorenzo? And so then... With him not being convicted on that, that leaves us completely wide open. We want to talk about a theory that we think could have happened. All right, let's go. We think is this a possibility that perhaps one of the daughters had something to do with it and that Anna Cacho is covering up so that she doesn't lose two of her children in one night. Yeah, like an accident. Like they played around. Like they were just playing. She maybe like hit him too hard or maybe like she accidentally stabbed him with something, like, you know, a stick or something. Or like kids are fucking weird. Like you like sometimes kids wanna see like what'll happen if they do something bad. Yeah, it's a little dark, but you know, well <laughs> <laughs> It's just a theory. Okay, you guys, it's just a theory. But it cannot be argued that Anna Gacho is a bad mother and that during this entire case, she's done nothing but disrespect the process of trying to get justice for her own fucking child. Yeah, and I think that's just what really, I mean, we've talked about the two between us, and it's like, I would do everything I can to make sure that I would be as yeah open to I cooperating mean, as possible. We were talking about this earlier. Like, imagine you have children, okay, and you're at your own house, and your child gets stab wounds to the face what are you gonna do in your own house what are you gonna do i would immediately try to call the police call the emergency room get an ambulance go like we've got to figure this out right now like we need it to save our child and she did the opposite of that she, she waited. waited hours she went to a further hospital yeah and then the cremation thing just doesn't sit well with me because initially there was so much blood and so much, you know, horrible face trauma that they didn't know what the cause of it was. It was only until the autopsy was done. And they realized that he had been stabbed. And they had to put a hold and wait on the cremation to get the autopsy to go through. Yeah. So. Because I believe that Anna knew it was worse so than it, it looked. So do you think it was the daughter with an accident that happened in the or was it one of the men? And do you think any of the drugs were actually involved? Do you think it was more likely to be Anna, the daughter, or or the strange men, you know? And again, was the drug paraphernalia something that needs to be considered in that? I think so. So my, my personal theory is I think it was one of the men, the 
she knew because he did something bad and he was an employee for, I for that, then yeah, I would probably not call the police immediately in that case, but I think most normal people most parents wait an hour, an hour and a half, right? Yeah. And especially if, if the injuries are so bad, he had like brain bleeds, you guys. Like it's not like oops, I fell down. Like he was it was trauma, okay? Right. Head trauma. <sighs> so this one is also left with kind of a sigh of disappointment. This is all of the information that we have on the case. If you guys have any other information or any theories or anything that we missed, do not hesitate to leave it down below. I will link the Reddit page, the Wikipedia page, and another video that we found about the case down below if you want to look into it further. But that is what we know about the case of Lorenzo Gonzalez Concho. And I am disappointed. I can see why people are so upset that this is just not, it is not that satisfactory ending. I mean, none of that's going to, none of that's ever going to be satisfactory, but there's it being a kid, there's so much mystery. Everyone got to walk. Yeah, random homeless guy. On him. It's just a big recipe for what the fuck. Yep. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We really hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you did, subscribe because I found out the other day that 50% of my audience is not subscribed to me. <laughs>